Hej, välkomna till kvällens föreläsning. Som varje torsdag är vi här på Konstakademin och vill börja med att påminna att nästa torsdag och onsdag är det också. Det är två timmars samtal och med flera inbjudna arkitekter i, sam i samarbete med eh, Spanska ambassaden eh, och temat är eh, museumarkitektur och museologi. Eh, så välkomna på onsdag och eh, torsdag redan halv sex för Mingel. Uh, but tonight uh, I have the pleasure to present two fantastic architects from uh, Madrid. Uh, Maria Langarita och Victor Navarro. Uh, they have had their practice since uh, 2005 um, and tonight they're going to talk about their uh, kind of method that they work with uh, that they call active strata uh, and they are going to tell us about that through their projects so I give them the microphone and thank you for coming tonight <laughs> thank you. Thank you for coming. Mm. Thank you for inviting and having us here. We are so, so no, pleased to be here. And as Mariano was saying, that we were going trying to explain to you our uh, ongoing in, in research, which is not this active strategy way of understanding uh, the world before and um, during a design is taking place. Uh, this is a, uh, this is one point of view, no? one way of looking at the world in a, in a cross-section instead of understanding it uh, with a plan view, no? which is normally how uh, politics and culture is organized, no? in a, in like in a plan or you know, uh, type of uh, uh, land uh, view. This, this section um, makes us think that everything is connected, that everything uh, it, it, it belongs to the same system, it's not that much. It's not that clear when a country begins and the other one no, ends. So there's not that uh, uh, clear, but it's it's uh, more clear no, than anything. The same. Uh, we work with this idea of introducing this vision of the world in every small action that we are able to join no, with our practice and our research or whatever. We understand culture in the same way. No? And, over a uh, uh, over layer no? of, of of knowledge and no? and, and materials, uh, materials yeah. and history and, and histories that take take place that can also uh, be understood that it's not that much that different no? between one region and the other no this is easy to understand no? how can uh, Europe get no into you know Am Am uh, America history or, or France no French uh, France can get into the North uh, European History. It's like those lines. We like to uh, look for them, and, and you know, let's, let, let us uh, travel no, through those uh, like uh, rabbit holes or time tunnel type of holes. The first uh, project we want to explain around this um, idea is this: uh, the refurbishment of an old slaughterhouse in Madrid, which has become a huge uh, cultural complex, which is called Matadero Madrid. It's like a uh, 18 buildings that were uh, built and designed for a, a huge uh, slaughterhouse in the south uh, of Madrid at the beginning of the 21th, 20th century has become now, now uh, like a cultural complex with one building for this for uh, cinema, one for literature, uh, one for art, yeah. arts, and so on. Uh, the, the slaughterhouse was located close to the Manzanares River, which is the river. Uh, that we have in Madrid, which is a ridiculous river compared with the rivers that uh, are around uh, here, uh, like a, you know, it's not really a river, but this is the river of Madrid, and it was located there because of obvious reason, not to you know, take, take the the water yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and everything. No? So that was the building how as uh, at it was at the uh, uh, at this being re recovered. No, it's a type of uh, industrial Madrilenian uh, type of architecture which is. 
industrial inside with all uh, iron no? and a steel frame, uh, steel frame type of structure and is like kind of neo mudejar and uh, historic in the outside. This is how we look uh, in, in, uh, when we were there to, 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 work, to work in this space. No? For us, it was very interesting to understand that uh, if, if uh, Madrid has been urbanized all around, no? everything is being covered with uh, cement, have roads, streets, buildings, in the middle of this, in the center of this uh, big space, uh, like, uh, time has not uh, taken no? uh, over. It was just uh, soil ground where the animals, this is the, the space where animals used to be alive in the slaughterhouse. So it's, it's like a, it's like, if, it's like if a, um, a field, yeah, uh, yeah. A, a, a piece of field. Which you, yeah, you put a glass on top of something and time is not no, running inside the space. It's, it's time is stopped here. So uh, what happened is that uh, there is this pro uh, like a cultural pr um, project, which is the Redwood Music Academy, which is a temporary event that they take place every two years in, one, in a different country, in a different city, and they, uh, they refurbish or re they use an already existing space to create a an, an music academy that uh, take uh, place during one month, and uh, at the end, people uh, uh, they, they record uh, no, music together. No? There were like 21 people from all over the world selected from, from thousands, and they go, go to one place and have to create music together. In, in the 2011, it was supposed to be uh, uh, happening. This was supposed to be happening in Tokyo, but there was the Fukushima disaster and all the, all, you know, all that, and they didn't, they couldn't do it there. So they have to move very quickly from um, from. Uh, it was this was in ap April or March, no? March, yeah. And the academy has to open this, its doors in uh, in October, and it, it couldn't be, uh, it couldn't uh, delay because it's a lot of. Uh, famous musicians that have to come here to give their lectures, so they have to uh, happen. So uh, they choose us to uh, create a project, a 5,000 square meter a a music academy to be built uh, in two months, and we had like one one month to design it. So we have to like take everything that we had already there and and and, and get it active. No, so we have this uh, huge space covered. It was uh, extremely well ventilated because it was for, for pigs, uh, alive pigs, to be there, no? Just like, you know, all the gas that, can, that could be, you know, digest in this space. So it, it worked perfectly for fire regulation. Ventilation was perfect. The rain was not there, so there was something already uh, solved. Uh, it was huge, and we couldn't uh, climatize the whole space, not only because of budget reasons, but because uh, they, they have only two months to build. There's no way in, in the world that an that, that, um, air-conditioned machine could be in one place in two months. No? It need to be built first. So we couldn't, we couldn't do something like that. So we decide we have the rain, the rain, rain issue covered. We, uh, we have more space than we need, so we can place uh, small spaces. They can be climatized, like a, you know, like a, house, uh, yeah. a small house, a tiny you know, cabin. And uh, we can save some of the money we didn't have. It was the crisis, no? 2011, in the middle of the explosion. So we we uh, we won the small competition with those three slides. We said the Wood Music Academy in Matadero could not be a building for many reasons. So it should be like a city. The city was also a, pro a design strategy, quite useful because a city is quite heterogeneous. So we can we, we could have designed one part and already, you know, agreed with the client and everything was okay. And the other part, for example, you know, the recording studio was not designed at all. There was no agreement, no, with everything in the air, in the air, no? So it's like a city. And if Matadero Madrid, like, uh, the cultural complex with a concrete type of city, uh, we wanted to create like a green city inside. So we use this type of strategies, all uh, designed to be very fast, the one for the columns, no? Uh, going, uh, creating in the, with a steel frame, balloon frame type of structures, very fast, no? To get there, uh, like in the, you know, um, when they were conquered, or they were uh, conquered, the America, America line. Uh, or we could use like sandbags as they were used in the, in the Second, First World War to protect uh, monuments no? or architecture. It was very heavy and very heavy construction that can be made very fast. 
the can isolate sound. Eh? Can isolate sound. Ah, ah, and also we use it for isolation, sound, sound, sound isolation. And also we already have this idea of paradise, of a green city where everybody from every, everywhere in the world could get there, understand that are, they are in, in a music event or paradise, so they could easily get there no, to get party and get the creating the music. But at the end, this is the result. It was, it was built, uh, no, actually, in two months, we, we, uh, managed, to we <laughs> managed to accomplish the, the contract. And, uh, and it was, uh, uh, we used all those type, uh, different type of uh, emergency st uh, strategies for construction. This is the city, the green city type of uh, plot. We have uh, small spaces for people to re rehearse. We have uh, bigger spaces for people to party or to have a, a master class or lectures and a professional recording studio that had the same requirements are, are a professional, concrete, super expensive type of uh, recording studio. But this one... Uh, uh, made of sound. <laughs> <laughs> made the same thing. It was like uh, we create some plazas for for a spontaneous concert to happen, for people to hang out, for people to smoke. Yeah, maybe in electronic music, the part of smoking. And we couldn't, uh, we couldn't create a, a basement, a concrete basement situation because there was an, it was ephemeral architecture, it was temporary architecture, we couldn't meet with concrete. So we decided to create those beams, uh, steel beams, over the, over the, over the ground. They the, the work as a basement and also allowed us to go uh, all around with all the installations on the, sun, on the air and the, and the water. We, we have those uh, boxes were completely isolated with, with very simple materials but well constructed. We, uh, we placed in the, in, the, in the area with different um, positions to improve the, uh, the sound isolation without using material. Material is expensive, take time to build. No, we use those uh, uh, textiles to, uh, to in increase the sun absor absorptive uh, surface in space. And also we have this opportunity to see our project like dying, no? because after 2013, the activities uh, stopped, the uh, city council, they, they didn't use the space anymore. But uh, that was, uh, we understood that by working with the garden, with, by working with organic materials, uh, creating architecture is half mineral, half organic. Uh, when you abandon it, it improves. No? And there's no musicians anymore, but there's a lot of plants, there are fruits, animals. animals. <laughs> there are a lot of uh, mice. They like, uh, you know, the, the wires, to it. With the wires. So when, when we were do, doing this very spontaneous and explosive type of project, we were thinking, uh, why uh, architecture? Why this is not architecture? It, it wasn't architecture because uh, the liability companies didn't want to insert, insert, in, no, insert the, the project. They say, this is not architecture. It's temporary. It's not made with architecture materials. So we cannot give you like a no, um, insurance. So this is not architecture. Why? Because we, we start, th we start uh, thinking on, how we felt there, it was architecture, no? it was, it, it managed the politics of so, so social relation, but it wasn't, it's, it was certain that it was, it wasn't, it was not in the books that where we study architecture, no? we, st we were back. So we, we uh, thought in the enlightenment mo movement with all the radical and utopian architects type of uh, constructions, they and we went back to the roots, and we went back to the, to, uh, National French Library, and we found that along with this, this first um, uh, Ledoux uh, project, there was this other project from Ledoux, which is a library. It was not, it, and it's not made with a stone and perfect geometry and mineral uh, look. It's all made with uh, organic, it's, it's, it's all open, it's, 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 it's still utopia. utopia but it was not in our, our textbooks. Why? No? So we started uh, collecting and other uh, techniques and knowledge around architecture by using the textiles, by using um, uh, vegetation, by using uh, triage, and, and many other techniques that were out of our books. We don't know why, but they were, they were in there. 
So we start understanding that when you look at architecture, for example, in the huge uh, uh, encyclopedia, no contemporary enc encyclopedia, when you look for architecture world, world, what you see is something like that. No? And we start calling this collection of, of materials, of, of um, material um, vocabulary and material culture, we call it the bust. It's like a bust. It, it travels through time as this bust no, from the Roman Empire that it's been traveling 2,000 times, and we still, if we see this guy now here in the street, we recognize him, no? Actually, we, 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 it's, it's a lot of information that is still there and travel through times, and this sometimes, it might be that this is what we like of some type of architecture, how it travels, no? Without losing its identity. But there was this other uh, collection of architecture and knowledge that we already, it, 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 it excited us, no? it, we, it, we like it, we like the, those, type, those type of spaces where we feel good. No? And we call those uh, area of the architecture uh, culture, we call it the belt. It's, it's, it's there, but <clears throat> it doesn't travel that good around time. If you don't know how it, it was in the beginning, maybe you, when you found it, you found it, you just said, mm, how it, no, you found like a, no, a piece of, of, of textiles no, in a corner, you don't know, it could look no, like, a, like the no, Alexander von Humboldt uh, room designed by um, Schinkel. <clears throat> so we start uh, understanding our practice as architects, but also as teachers and prof as architecture professors uh, to increase our, uh, the material vocabulary, what we call the bust and the pelt. And it's not the past or the pearl, it's not competition, it's not like, you know, like something it's like masculine. It's both, no? We, we, should, we should regain for architecture all this um, pearl uh, um, uh, technique. <coughs> and then a few <coughs> years, well, not at the same time, we, we won a competition in the center of Madrid, that is the Media Lab Prado. It's um, all an old show mill that is uh, close to the to the museum of the uh, Museo del Prado or the Reina Sofia. Maybe if you have been in Madrid, you know this place. So it's in the axis of, of the cultural axis of Madrid. And this is where uh, Picasso is all storage, and here, no? Velázquez. Velázquez. Yeah, and this is the, the Herzog and the Merón building in Madrid, one of them. So uh, when we won this contest, we, what we found was this building, an amazing building. It's from the, from the early beginning of the 20th century, and it was a pure bust. No? So it was made of concrete, it was uh, a beautiful uh, hand manuscript, no? like all the, all the um, Scaffolding was uh, scaffolding. Uh, the, yeah. Yeah. the mold, the yeah. mold of the concrete was made by uh, mill workers. Yeah, so it was beautiful. Uh, so this was the, the kind of architecture we were looking at in, in books, <laughs> and we thought, okay, how can we act here? How can we, uh, how can we try to deal with this? Thing, no, that was this bus, that was the, the show mill, and what kind of opening could we introduce in this dialogue in order to create uh, the new media lab in this old show mill? So we started to think, okay, why don't we try to make like a superhero you know, made of pelt that could you know, interact with the other one and do this kind of game. So we, we won the, the, the contest with and this. And we were 25 when we won. Yeah, we were young. We were able <laughs> to do this kind of crazy thing. So we call it a Street Fighter. And we talk about the, the video game and we talk about having the, the show mill and the bus and, the, and then we thought about the opening. And the opening was going to be La Cosa, that is like the thing, it's, it's something that is going to be Difficult to, to explain, like, no, you know, have like this, uh, this, uh, uh, custom. the custom, no, we saw before, that it was going to make with all the materials that are not able to travel in, in time, like organic material. So we, we decided to use textile and wood, no, materials that they, they were not like the concrete. If the concrete is going to last maybe for 300 years or 400 years, then these materials, maybe they're going to change in 
they're going to be changed in 50 years or maybe less because they, they, they have another kind of pattern. But the beautiful thing is that everything that is hidden by these clothes of these materials are things that need to be removed early. So here was the, all the uh, air conditioning machines, all the wires, all the things that usually you need to change because they are obsolete in a, in a certain way. So with this idea of the bust and the belt, we try to, to work in two ways, you know, like having a 20th uh, century building and then a 21st century building dialing together. No? The, 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 the La Cosa was going to um, make these, uh, solve the regulations, all the new things that we needed to add, and then the Serreria Belga was going to give like the space, the space and the no, and this amazing view. So this is how it ended. No, this thing going inside the the old building, traveling through. It was also Media Lab is a is a place where art, science, technology, and society are are mixed. No, it's it works like a. I would say it's it's yeah it's like an horizontal uh, uh, cultural platform so everybody in the neighbor can go there and do their stuff no it's it's not a museum it's it's more about doing so you can go there uh, have a space and create so this is as you see we we try to to leave the serveria as it was trying to put there the minimum things and just by placing and then having in the other parts, like the new stairs that had needed to, to solve the regulation of evacuation and everything. Yeah, the end la cosa is only is there for accomplished regulation. This yeah. is the size of regulation. It was one third of the space. It was machines, fire, scapes, no? It was and all regulation. All. And it, it worked like a puppet. It was hung from these bins. It was really light in a certain way, made all, all of textile. So also Media Lab is a platform for digital art, so it could be used really as a as a uh, display to make like I don't know like with the computers you could uh, transform the lighting and create a video games or whatever you wanted inside these these textile walls. So you here you can feel that what is hidden in, in this in this wood box it's it's the, just the the technical machines that are there, no? But the empty space for people. So here you can see the hardware, creative hardware, all this you know, mix between the old and this, this new. Also, it wasn't made on the crisis, so uh, we were lucky because we used very cheap materials, but the, the people who was working there was really good. We have uh, um, um, mid-workers mid -workers that were brave, so we could spend time with them because there was no work in other places, so we could use them. So instead of having very, I don't know, expensive uh, materials, we use this plywood that was really nice. And see, you see how it working inside the, you know, this thing at night. And now we are jumping to another place of Madrid. We are going to the, to the periphery. Yeah, the periphery of Madrid. It's a, a very uh, boring neighborhood with us. Stupid regulations, just made for touched uh, housing, no. And but the clients that had been living all around Europe, they wanted to go there because their parents have a, a small house near this place, and they have like a, uh, I don't know, like a good feeling about this yeah. area. Also, they wanted their grandparents to take care of their grandchildren. Yeah, so. That's it. That, that's made. Yeah. <laughs> but. This was a place in a what it was a, a, a not so far away, like maybe 30 years, 25 years. In the uh, 60s. Yeah, in the 60s. It was the um, landfill or the dump of, of the city. So it, it, at the beginning, it's called the Carcavas. It's hard to explain. It's a kind of, of land that is made, uh, it has a lot of uh, up movement. Up and down. Yeah, yeah up and down. No? And it was covered with all these this, uh, construction materials and everything that was thrown there. And it became plain And area. they covered it with uh, concrete. Yeah, so it, it, it was awful, no? No memory of, of anything. But when you need to uh, build there, 
you need to go to the uh, solid strata. No? You have to go deep down to get the foundations. So we started to think, OK, this is so strange. So now we, we need to find the, the, the active strata, the one who is going to support this, this house. And we started to think, how could we use that in order to create the house? So we, we thought, OK, Madrid can be really hot. Uh, the neighbor, it's quite horrible. And really dry. And really dry. So we, we started to think, okay, why don't we try to live underground, like the rabbits again, and w why don't we think that the house is going to create a microclimate that is going to have the same um, properties or superpowers that had their livings when we were outside of Spain. No? So these guys that had been living in Berlin, in Finland, uh, they, uh, uh, they were artists, so I mean they have like this bohemian kind of living, and it was a strange to put place them here in the outside of, of Madrid. That it's maybe you haven't been there, but it's so boring, no nothing at all. It's yeah. Your skin gets dry when you're yeah. crossing, you know, the pedestrian path. And we th we decided that, okay, this was going to have like three strategies. Okay, we're gonna make a big hole in all the plot. Okay, it was a 20 by 20 plot, so we, we decided to dig it. Everything in order to get into the into the ground, it was like four meters uh, uh, deep. The what we have to take out. Then we placed some kind of of uh, elements like a um, like a ram in order to solve uh, these these um, different this slope of difference of level. Then a concrete slab and then a, a swimming pool that was going to be placed, no, to have the sun, because if you want to have no, um, a swim, you want the sun to be hitting you on the back. And then a timber box that was going to be the, the um, like the um, dining, no, not the dining. The intimate the space. Intimate space, yeah. That is going to be quite intimate and quite close, just facing uh, the only thing that was nice in that space that was this park. The, the regulation in Spain is quite strange because they, um, they ask you to create a park, but they don't believe in parks, so they just do a rectangle and they say, this is a park, it's solved. Let's but you need 15% of the space to be a park, okay, this yeah. is the space park. Just, and that's it. And they throw it there and nobody takes, takes care of it. But the good thing, is that there are some trees, so when you look at it, it's nice anyway, because trees are nice, always. <laughs> so with this, is, this is how we, we operate in the house. We created this uh, uh, big hole, then we created some patios that were uh, here and here. So all the, all the living areas were facing these, these patios, and we just found that in this place, we could start to create like this, um, I would say, Nordic garden. I'm very <laughs> <laughs> um, optimist, <laughs> but it looks nice. That could be open, so there was no uh, like uh, limit between the inside and the outside. When it was open, it felt the, the same anyway. And you didn't see all the surroundings. It was You weren't close, but you, you needed to access to the house by this uh, uh, ramp and that it gives you the idea that you are really far from the outside you need like you are in, like in a castle you need to put the, the this bridge and also this allows us uh, two things you know that for the trees it was really good because we didn't need water we were really into the uh, freatic, fre freatic uh, you say freatic uh, level water yeah. level yeah, water under, level. underwater yeah Underground and also it creates like a slight movement of air, so it, we have like this big uh, chimney, not like for the air to go up, so it, it really moves the air and it, it helps a lot to have the house in a very um, a temperate way. And also from the outside you can 
really start to block the views in order to stop the sun, but also to block the no the vision here. You can feel a little bit how is the the how the neighbors are, but it really no. It, we really thought that having this kind of of inner space that is a kind of tradition of a, a Spanish architecture, no. Also, this idea of the patio and having the patio uh, as a as a inner space, but without instead of being the inner space, it could be surrounded the the house. No, this kind of feeling. This is the the public. Uh, the, the I mean, the salon area, the space. Here's the view from the garden. No, towards the garden again. This is what we call the North Garden because he, here up you have the parking. Sorry. But, uh, so the, par the cars can, can, par can park <coughs> there, but when they are not, it's a nice space also that seems to be cloudy every day. That is not so common in Madrid. Here you have the swimming pool and all the stuff. There's a few things, some details. Nice made also, and this is this kind of a space where the stairs goes up and it, it works as a chimney for the hot air to go up. And those are the the rooms here. And we try to transform the whole house into a climate climate machine, no? Mm, air conditioning machine, by keeping the moisture, which is like a treasure. In some places, no? Here we keep the moisture and we move it around the spaces uh, by creating those air chimneys. And then in the top, we try to really close the views. Always, you have like a meter here you can feel, no? So usually you have like a small patios in the upper part, so the sun doesn't go out directly like this idea, no? And also if we create some spaces and then you go up and you can see the views of the Sierra de Madrid, that's quite nice once you pass all the buildings around. This is the view towards the bottom part. So now we are going to pass from one penthouse, no, this one to... Another another house, no? This is located in the south of Madrid, in close to Cadiz. Spain. Yeah, it's yes. the Spain, the, the south of Spain in the Atlantic Ocean. It is a, a residential area, high, high class, but all all built with those um, uh, white boxes type of house, quite urban, is, uh, by, by placed here in more uh, one of the most wild uh, b uh, s uh, beach areas no, of, of Spain. But this, th was this type of architecture quite um, organized, uh, very similar. It's what we, it was what we call you know, the football player type of uh, house. They do it everywhere, in the middle of the city, it's the same house. But it, what it has here is like, like a beautiful uh, uh, vegetation, which is uh, extremely dense, uh, but close to the sea. It has the duna here, very beautiful. The, house that, the, the houses <laughs> transform the duna into grass, which is like almost impossible, no? Like fighting against nature, but the duna is here, and the, and the, and the vegetation is, 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 is almost perfect. What we wanted to, to, to use is we have this, this plot here to act here, this square plot, and we wanted to act in a way that after uh, creating this huge house, uh, we could preserve s some part of this uh, no, na nat nice. characteristic nature here. So we said, okay, we are going to uh, place the program that the clients wanted to have a, a very extreme program with many things, but preserve uh, what we have here. So what we said is, instead of building uh, a house in a plot, we are going to cut a little uh, a piece of the plot and put it upstairs and under, under this huge concrete slab full of trees and full of uh, uh, vegetation, we are going to place the program of the house. And they say, okay, okay, okay. And <laughs> if I have all the program, it's okay. So we create this house, which is a huge, uh, it's a, a concrete slab uh, uh, making with a zigzag mold in f uh, for, for regulation and for uh, structural reasons. And then uh, it allowed us to have a thick uh, uh, layer of, of, of soil, like uh, 
from one meter to 60 centimeters that allowed us to have trees and everything. And then we have this structure of parallel uh, walls that are structural and also organize the airflow, which is in the Atlantic uh, coast of Spain. It's very important because one day you have the, uh, the, the air coming from the sea, which is salty and, and fresh, and uh, it's nice somehow. And the other day you have it from the inland, which is extremely fast. It's full of mosquitoes and stuff. You can also see a chair flying or whatever when it's flowing. So you need to organize uh, the house uh, with, the, with the air. Very important. And this is the, 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 ground, the ground floor, which is dig into this uh, landscape. This, is the, this was a very bad picture because it was taken by myself with my mobile yesterday, but the, the, the construction is, is almost finished. And then we have this concrete and the, and the plants are already growing on, on top. Over here, uh, we preserve um, all the uh, plants that we could that were already there in the, in the plot with kind of hard uh, negotiation with a construction company and the client and what are we doing with this, this is shit? No, we just, this is what should be here because those plants that grow in, 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 the, in the Atlantic coast are extremely hard. They have, they have been fighting hard to be here, you know? so they, they need to be still to remain. No? Oh, of course, the grass. Yeah, a little bit of grass is <laughs> always... <laughs> so is this, right? Yeah, we fight it a lot, but we were not <laughs> we could, strong we lost, enough. We lost this one. <laughs> Okay, so it's just uh, two slabs of concrete, and it's the airflow coming all around, and yeah. and the so uh, all this thick stack is able uh, it enables us to to have a, like a bigger structure in order to have a lot of uh, soil on top to plant. All yeah, that you vegetation. can have like you know like a truck garage on top of the if you want to. Base. And it's very important here to understand that uh, creating those shadows, no, those spaces that is, is not, uh, is a, this is not a wasteland, but everything that is under something in the shadow of something, is, it becomes not the best space. No, it's like having this stair, huge staircase facing the sea, but allowing the air to go flow through it and creating some shadow underneath is like a more valuable than the, you know, like the. A standard uh, sea views, for example, no? creating those type of patios where uh, the, the wind could be stopped, so some type of vegetation could grow and some type of activities can be, be uh, going on uh, even in the windy days. No? And this is the last one, no? The last one. Yeah. I don't know. We are okay? Yep. So. Mm, now we are. This is social housing. It's not. It's not only about <laughs> huge houses. This is uh, Barcelona, but it, it is where uh, this concept of uh, acting in the city to create this uh, increase the surface of the city for, for housing. Uh, it started, and we have been evolving the, the concept in many and many contests that we won. <laughs> we hope someone, sometime, one of them gets built. Okay, this, uh, did, uh, this uh, uh, concept of strategy uh, started uh, with this idea, is uh, where we are working in the, in the rural areas, in the seaside, we have this really contact with nature, with the, the, flow, the, the, with the, the good things and the bad things, and we are in touch and we can become conscient. But in the city, when we are in the middle of the city, it's very difficult to understand how, is, how it looks, the, the landscape that it was there in previous to the urbanizing being urbanized. No? So it's really difficult to love something that you cannot see. So it's, it, this is something that we were uh, th you know, thinking in a critical way around the city. And then we understood that it's not about the buildings. It's always it's very easy you know, to blame architecture in a newspaper. Uh, it's or the buildings, or the spectacular buildings, or the, you know, the speculative buildings are destroying the city. But what really destroying the city is a thin layer of concrete. Maybe it's 10 centimeters, 12 centimeters of concrete of plastic that plastify, you know, cover the soil and, and separate uh, the city, uh, ur uh, the urban life with the context, you know, the cultural, natural, uh, the systemic context. So we thought, maybe we, don't, uh, we were acting in Barcelona. Uh, it was an European uh, contest? Uh, European contest for, no, for uh, Young research. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm going to say, maybe Barcelona, you cannot understand how, how the landscape was, or how, how it was before the city. But the same thing that when we are uh, restoring a monument, no, restoring a castle, restoring no, the, the Chinese uh, wall, uh, we have plans. No? We, we also have plans on how the landscape was before the city. No? So if we make an effort, we could understand that this Barcelona is this. If we make a hole, we could found the other, the other strata, no? the, the previous strata, no? the other system, other, other natures that could be there with more porosity, higher porosity, uh, uh, with a bigger um, reducing no? the, the heat island, no? and many other problems that the city, that the city has, not only because of the buildings, but because the city has been, uh, uh, no? the city has been apart from his... Has been covered, no? The, it's been no. covered. Yeah. So I would say, okay, if we can uh, make, make a symbolic and you know, uh, intellectual hole in the city, understand that the, the, this, this culture, uh, material culture is there underneath, we can al also stack those uh, pieces of land that be, will be removed one on top of the other. No? So we can create a city that is, a, uh, is an overlying of, uh, of uh, city uh, pavement where we can uh, uh, start creating the houses on this situation. Yeah. So, so the idea was, okay, if, if we have the common city made as a, as a regular building, no, with all these regulations, uh, how we could make adaptable city? Because the, the, the issue in Barcelona is that they don't have uh, plots anymore. Barcelona, it's, it's made. I mean, they don't have any more plots. And they don't know how they are going to transform the city if they need it, because everything is built. So we decided, OK, instead of making a residential building that was what the context was asking for, why don't, you, why don't, why don't we make a city that can tr be transformed, not in, in five days, not every uh, moving your wall, but just by 50 years or maybe 100 years uh, being used as a, as a as, that, as plots that can be easily transformed. So the idea was to create this kind of, of plots every nine or 12 meters. Uh, thinking about this idea of having a very, uh, I don't know, uh, very um, uh, resistant, <laughs> resistant uh, plots, able to put whatever you want in there. And at the same time, thinking about this idea of time. Okay, this is a, 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 a diagram that we love very much. Is a Stewart Brand a common building a sharing layer of chains. No, it tells us how it's a regular building. No, so the thickness of the line it gives you the idea of how how it's going to last that layer. So the structure maybe is going to last 20, uh, 200 years. Uh, the skin of the facade fas uh, is going to last 70 years. The service installations, 15 years. The space plan, five years. You now the stuff, like chairs, whatever, maybe you change it now one in one year. So the idea was, OK, why don't we make this uh, diagram very radical? Instead of having every layer changing a little bit, let's make one layer is going to last a lot, like the structure and, the, and this idea of the plot. And then the other one is going to be thought as to last 15 years. So if we it's polarize these items, maybe we found a, a kind of architecture that is able to solve the problems of Barcelona. And that's why what we decided, no? having this middle uh, land recovered no? for the city that is on, on, on top. And then this is lab of concrete that we're going to have. So the idea was to, instead of making a building, it's, it was going to just add things as furniture so you could live there as you were in Ikea, no? in some way. It was more close to that. Yeah. So, it's like, uh, so the plot was really hard to solve. It was a triangle like it, but we, we really liked it. And we decided to add, add all these uh, soft materials inside this hard material. Again, the bus and the pelt. Uh, uh, theory apply it to a to a city in in this case, no. So we have like this uh, heavy uh, plot every n uh, six meters or nine meters, and then all the 
flexible items, whatever. So we won the contest. It was great, but they didn't believe it <laughs> in it. So the end, they, didn't it. they didn't do it. But with the same idea, we won another contest, this time in Malaga. So it's on the south of Spain. Again, it's in the Mediterranean area, but it's quite close to, to Cadiz. I'm close, I mean, 200 kilometers. Malaga, maybe you know it, it's a city that it's now becoming like the Barcelona of the South. It's in, in terms of cultural um, items, it's really becoming really active with the museum, but also it has a lot of tourists, nice weather, better climate, so it's like paradise in, in Earth, uh, truly. It's a very beautiful city. Uh, and well, the surroundings again are not so beautiful, but this, they, they, they are trying to change. So this was the area where the buses of the city were stopped, and now they, they, they wanted to create a kind of um, uh, neighborhood that it was called, it's called Manzana Verde. So it's several buildings were going to create a kind of neo Mediterranean city. So the aim was to create okay, if the Mediterranean city has been lost in a certain way. Uh, how we can recreate it in a new, new contemporary uh, uh, thought, no? And they have this really modern <laughs> uh, uh, plan again. So it, it's it's always the same. The I was saying we want the new Mediterranean. They say this is the plan. The plan. And you cannot change plan. it. Cannot so change. it's like very modern with all these buildings. Uh, having the same uh, distance between them, not not very dense. Uh, it was dense in terms of, of how many people were there, but huge space between buildings, so the shadow wasn't there. Okay, so we thought, uh, how can we react to this? Again, uh, thinking instead of uh, instead of in plan, why don't we think in section? So we started to to uh, think about how we could reuse a lot of knowledge of the Mediterranean um, architecture that could be used, you know, like the Sankar Gardens of, of um, Morocco. Morocco, and all this strategy of going into the ground to bring the water, and then uh, thinking about the, about the facade, not as a unique layer made of, I don't know, 30 centimeters, but a depth uh, space that could be made of different uh, inner layer, so the idea was to create really external space. This was before the, the COVID uh, problems, no? But now they are very happy that we won with this idea of having external space open to the air that could be used. To, as it was a three meter, three meter depth uh, facade, no? Yeah. So this was the, the plan that we made uh, with the... Um, uh, in, uh, there, so the idea was to use all this is this ground strategy uh, in order to bring all the vegetation that could live there without having expensive of uh, expensive Relation. use of water mm. yeah and also instead of uh, thinking about this kind of of modern that the trees are just something that you plant every 10 meters in, uh, we thought about creating this forest that could uh, bring um, fresh air from for the first uh, layers of the building, and then once this this uh, Mediterranean forest could be and uh, didn't uh, have enough um, uh, um, height to, to work, try to think about how this belt could be introduced into the into the building. Also, instead of of sonification and having one building for each uses, no, one for the school, one for the for for the dealing one for no for the sanitary purpose we could create with those thick slabs no creating uh, urban plots one top of the other we can we can also stack buildings and stack stack uses in the city to liberate more space for the for the for the open space yeah so uh, this was uh, more or less the idea we had like a hard system that is on the on the left, uh, that was going to be made on concrete, really stuff, and, and the soft system that could be easily uh, replaced and changed in the time. So mixing together, we were thinking about this uh, strata, active strata, or urban active strata. So we, we also, for us, very important to um, 
to create those uh, parking spaces to be, uh, you know, uh, changed, you know, uh, the uses in 50, 20 years. I don't know how much long it's going to be, you know, this enclosement of very expensive uh, concrete boxes. They are uh, digging to the ground, no, to keep our, our, our cars, and they cannot be nothing else but that. So we, uh, we try in every, you know, um, uh, every building, building to, to incorporate it into this uh, garden uh, uh, system. So, so the aim is that when the cars in the future, they won't be there. So this part of the building could be used. Then again, no, all this uh, water that is uh, inside the, the earth can be used to have these trees that maybe they go uh, from zero to 20 meters. And then later, all these plants are going to be uh, added into the into the building. So the idea is really to create a, um, an active architecture that is not made just with the bust, but also with the pelt. Uh, that has is and this relation between the garden, the sunken garden, you no know, spaces, and the facade and the house, it has only works until the 20 meters. Mm -hmm. Then we have another strata, which is you know, the ambitious, you know, the, the urban, you know, eager for construction that is goes up. In this case, it was uh, you know, 20 more meters up that cannot be uh, uh, team, team with uh, vegetation. So we need uh, another stra material strategies you know, to complete. Yeah, so well, this is the facade. This is now we are just uh, working on it. So they are um, more or less the, the, the images that politicians need to show to the press. But we are still working on. But what what we thought is it was okay. Let's let's think about having these modules that can be easily move around the building. So not not by just. I mean, I mean, not moving, but in time they can be re transformed. Transform and easily. here we use this strategy that it was from from our you know, our youth. That is, why if you if you just need a one uh, room uh, house, you have a small house, and then if you need a three you no know, room, you have a bigger house. No, so we said, okay, there is like a, a, a minimum module, which is this one. Which has the kitchen and the and the, um, the bath and, and the space, open space that is for everybody. And then we, we could add one room for uh, um, dormitory, you know, for bed bedrooms, but can also become like a you know a professional room that can be transformed. They can be a, you know a winter garden or whatever. Yeah, so the idea is with all these items, playing with it, you're able to create this active building that. Uh, enables the city of Malaga to to really have a social building because it's going, this is going to be a social building that is able to to really create like a kind of Mediterranean city where the like the Soko, the 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 streets, the parks, whatever are placed in a very high for building. Um, for example, here in. No, and if you wanted to really believe that the, that the, the city usage, is the, you know, the different functions of the city can be stuck in a vertical situation, we need to be able to uh, accomplish regulation. No? For example, in Spain, everything in every uh, the world, you need, if you have, for example, a school on top of, of, of a dwelling of, of buildings, every, every different um, uh, function needs their own uh, 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 fire escape, their own staircase, their own... No? A vertical circulation. What we did here is we have uh, four blocks, one stuck on top of the other. We we created four holes in the in the no, in the concrete slabs that could be in the future all full with stairs. Now we only need two, so we just uh, have two. And the other and the other holes we place some no, temporary gardens to preserve no, the space. So uh, believing no in the in the adaptive uh, city and the adaptive architecture, we need. Uh, also to be able to, you know, to incorporate future you know, um, regulation uh, re requirements you know, into the present. Yeah, and as you can see here, we have a concrete slab every nine meters. So the idea is that the other uh, slabs are made of wood. Uh, so it, they can be easily uh, removed from there. So you can have a bigger space if you want to have like a, whatever. Yeah, uh, a gym or a school or a college. Because this is going to be public space. Uh, for renting, so I mean, 
uh, this is housing for renting, so this is going to be public space for a lot of years that they can really change in the future. Um, that's it. That's it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Thank you very much for okay. your presentation of uh, your fantastic projects. Um, I will see if um, uh, there are some questions that you want to place uh, about the things that we've seen uh, or about the methods of work. Someone now? Um, what well, do you think? I can, I can, I can start myself. I, I was thinking while I was looking at the projects that you have a, a, a an interesting approach to context in general, which uh, is very well uh, resumed by La Cosa. I think it's uh, like you either um, have a strong relationship with it by uh, acknowledging what it is and, and not trying to to like modify it uh, or you create your own context mm -hmm. and and I was thinking if if that is is, is, is it that um, something that you um, think about is, is it the way the the outcome of your uh, work it, it, it ends up like that or, or is it an active uh, decision that you make I would say it's active because uh, we believe we we we, be, uh, we live in a already built uh, situation. Europe is super old; it's all full, it's all built. So there's never like an empty space where you can uh, and and on the all the naturalist, naturalistic uh, and the scientists from the Enlightenment they also um, teach us that there's there was the there, there's it has always been something there before no? architecture, architecture appears or whatever appears. So for us, it's super important to believe that we work uh, in, a, in a team with other architects that uh, some of them were, uh, died like 200 years ago and some of them, they are not, go, they are not um, b born yet. So that is why we all, when we are uh, creating architecture in, in the present, we are always thinking how this architecture is going to be transformed, but not by us. But not all the architects are going to be like teaming, you know, making a team with us. Uh, at the same, the same way we make this, the team with this architect from the Belgium architect that make the the, the show mill, no, the Media Lab Prado project in Madrid. Uh, for us, it's like something. It's like a political position that we always uh, we we are always uh, modifying the contest. But there is a contest there. You cannot be like. You cannot be like all dressed, you know, with, you know, with your swimming pool, swimming suit, whatever, all are surrounded with people in a wedding. You're never alone. <laughs> you always need to be, you know, uh, be transformed by what is there. And your architecture cannot be, it's not possible to impose architecture because it's always like 90% of architecture is already there. It's the wind, it is, you know, it's the moisture, it is the sun, time, so. 90% is, is there, you just complete a little, with, with something, no? what we believe. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, uh, Madrid has a strong tradition, uh, the, the, the school of architecture in Madrid has a strong tradition, like in history approach to architecture, no? like more like Italian, no? and also formal, like if there is a street that goes into your building, then it should be a hole that cross it, and, but we really found out that we're, our approach was more about the wind is crossing, not, this, not, not just this line that somebody put on a plan, but there are other things that are crossing that it's this air coming through and maybe it's not so rigid. It's not, so that's why we are always trying to deal with this, not invisible, because they are really, you feel Visible. it a lot, but not so, I mean, Bust uh, approach. It's more <laughs> belt contest, but what we like. <laughs> Hello. 
Hello. Uh, I was thinking, because you're, you're working a lot with circular design and you're thinking of uh, sustainability in this way that it's something that is going to be for years and that it's, uh, it's a building that is uh, go going to metamorphize in time uh, according to the use. But uh, I'm also thinking a little bit of uh, what's happening right now, for example. Uh, now we're talking about the shortage of um, uh, building materials and uh, a little bit of shortage of concrete that a lot of people are uh, a little bit afraid of. Mm -hmm. So as you hear, I say a little bit all the time because I know everybody's very worried. So have you started to think about alternative materials that you can start using? Because you, you come from a country with very uh, rich history of building materials. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, what we, for example, what we did in, in the sawmill was, uh, was to think about how the materials were going to be transformed depending on where they are placed. So we think that it's not, it's not about, okay, we're going to use wood because it's, it's efficient in terms of, of uh, the planet, but also uh, if it's going to be transformed, it makes sense to, to use wood, for example, because it's something that you can recycle. But maybe if you're going to do something that is going to last for a lot of time, it makes sense to use it concrete, because if, uh, at the end, it's like a stone. You, I mean, you spend a lot of energy to create it, but if it's placed with sense, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, like Roman construction, no? we have the, the, this um, notion that if the bridge made by the Romans are still there, it makes sense use that kind of technology. So it's it's not it's about a balance, no, between when you need to use something that is gonna last and when you're gonna put plaster and then behind it it's you have a machine and when you have to take out the machine you have, you have to cut the wall and take it out. So it's about balancing all these uh, things. It's something that we are. Uh, yeah, we are afraid because, at least in Spain, it's quite uh, expensive and it's hard, to, for example, to find wood. We need right, to is bring. This the, 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 is what I was going to say the material crisis, which is something that we should we should be as architects talking all together, no? But because this is something really new. It's not. It's like the energy crisis in the 1972, no? Oh, oh, oh the, the petro, no? Um, petroleum, what is it? Oil is going to. It's not forever, no? It's not going to be forever. But now it's in architecture. Well, concrete is not going to be. This is not going to be enough still for everybody. Like yeah. it's first, like first time. No? But it, what it also said is the globalization, no, a crisis. No, because in Spain we have concrete. Well, we don't have it steel or wood. But in other places, what they don't have is uh, stone. Or it's like so. Uh, somehow it, 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 it's something it guides you to rethink in more uh, local type of architecture, but also uh, as we were talking about context that everything is built to recycle the uh, materials that's already there, no? We ca you can make concrete with all concrete. Uh, you can make, no, uh, pavement with all pavement. So I think it's, it's something more, something like that, no? That uh, we have to transform our waste into resources. This is something that we like to do in our buildings that had, all our buildings had a lot of uh, greenery. Because we like to think that all the waste that we create as humans in the, for example, in the lavatory or in the toilet, that can be transformed into resources for our plants that give us shadow and moisture that we need for living. So something like that is for us very uh, amuse, fun to think and to introduce in our project. No? We always <coughs> transform a dark water into a compost or resources for the plants because that's what we will use. No? But now we might have to start thinking this, the same thing about BASP, no? taking no, one column and creating no, the one slab, something like that. So I think it's very interesting. This is this uh, challenge that we have now, that we've been aware that the world is limited. It's not infinite. No? Architecture is not... Infinite. I mean, I think it's going to last at least our lifetime, but no. <laughs> we, think to, we need to think further.
Hi. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, thank you for a great lecture. Um, I was thinking a little bit when you talked about the context, because I think that the way you're looking at context differs a little bit from the conventional, um, at least we speak, uh, speak about it from a Swedish perspective. Um, but to me, it seems like your view on context also is very much about narrative. Uh, which I, you know, very much like it, but it would be quite fun to hear you elaborate a little bit about that and what it kind of makes, what it gives in terms of the creative practice. Uh, but also since if you, if, if you make this stand that you're actually seeing a context as a narrative, um, the importance of um, interpretation, uh, that maybe the creative act is in fact, uh, maybe the interpretation is the most important part of the creative act. Um, yeah, so it would be interesting to hear your thoughts about those, those things. Yeah, well, narrative is super important in life. Uh, in architecture, in, in architecture. Like everything. Yeah, but because all, we, have, we have found that um, storytelling uh, through the client involves them in creating their, their architecture, because when we, we design, it's not for us, it's for them. So usually, they are they are talking about uh, money, or maybe they are talking about things. Col colors. Colors. It's something that it's not the important part of life. No, the important life part of life is when the sun is going to hit you in the pump, no, and, it, and you're going to be outside drinking a gin tonic or whatever. And when you start think, telling them that it's not about the size of the room. No, this has three meters. No, why? I need three meters. It's not, they think that it's about measures, think it's, it's about even materials, that sometimes it's not. It's, it's about other things. And trying to, to change the way they have to think, I mean, in order to, to tell you other, other um, necessities, it's important to create a kind of Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, because architecture need humans. Uh, they are the clients. They are the no, the construction company, the politicians. You need it because there's no architecture. They can be, but normally there's not one architect as an artist that you no know, take the piece of uh, space, start making mixing materials, no, doing it, no, applying a plaster. No, this is not how we work. We, you need people to do everything you want. You think it should be done. So, for us, the the, the more uh, effective is to create like a, 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 a like an optimist narrative that people could love to join it. But not only clients, but uh, as in the Redmond Music Academy, for example, it was 5,000 uh, 5, square meters built in two months, one of them August. In Madrid, 40 degrees, you know, imagine. And they need to work like 24 hours. So it was three turn, three, um, uh, period of times, eight hours, eight hours, eight hours, they were uh, 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 flifting or shifting, no? And they need to be all happy and thinking and believing what they were doing was, it was a paradise for musicians. They were not musicians, they were, you know, carpenters or they were, but they were there and, and they take their, their family in the Sunday there where they were working. So it was, we needed that. So I think narrative is very important. Also, it's very fun because narrative is super f uh, easy to change. So you can also uh, intervene into all past, past architecture narratives. You can transform them, which is also very interesting as, as an academic or teacher. No? You can go there. You can go back to the uh, French uh, National Library. And whatever is being said about that, you can say it all different, no? which is also very interesting. What we are saying about our buildings can be said all different in the future. So it's also flexible. So for architecture that is so slow no, and rigid, and it's like, no, we say like architects, we are like those machines in the Star Wars that goes like super small, super big, but super slow. No? Narratives are super fast. Super, and, and we need that. Yeah, narrative are the rope that goes around <laughs> this machine and poof, <laughs> make it fall. So. Thank you. Is there a last question or? Um, 
running out of time. So uh, thank you very much for coming here with us tonight and showing us your work. Thank, thank you for the invitation. Uh, thank you for having us.